tuning in to the online broadcast network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Prisoner After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. 45 plus years in the making, and here we are talking about it. I'm very excited. Um, I have Steph C on the panel. What's up, guys? Meredith Placco. Hey, hey, hey. And I, of course, am Phil Svitek. And so uh, I kind of want to give this is our introduction episode, right? Yes. This is the this is the first episode that we're going to talk about. So for, we are beginning a 17 week journey. Yes. Into the village. Together. Together. Now, Meredith and I have seen the village. A few times. A few times. Mm -hmm. Steph, see, you're a newcomer. I'm a new villager. (laughs) I am. I love it. I'm very, very excited. What's her number? Uh, I'm number 15. (laughs) Number 15? That's my lucky number. (laughs) Okay. Because I just like it. What's your guy's number? I'm not a number. Uh Oh. (gasps) Yeah, I'm a person, okay? I'm not a number. (laughs) But if I had to be, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. So I'm number number 15. 15? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, um, as mentioned, we will dissect every single episode of The Prisoner for, you know, uh, one a week. And so we, we urge you to guys kind of come along, subscribe, rate, and comment. We really want to build this up, um, and we want to talk about everything um, to the fullest extent that we can. You know, there's going to be some things that you might be like, oh, you guys missed it, talking about this week. Again, we have 17 weeks, so we're pacing ourselves. So if we don't get to it right away in today's episode, don't worry. We have 16 left after this. Um, and yes, at times, it will be a little bit spoiler-filled, but um, not enough to, we won't give away endings and things like that. So if you are, like, Steph C, you have the ability yes. to participate and partake. Um, and I also want to give a quick shout out to Six of One Appreciation Society. They've uh, they've been supporting us in this kind of venture. Um, this is five years in the to making the- for me. I've wanted to do this for five years, and I finally found the panel of my dreams <laughs> to be able to do this. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I've never seen you so excited and so prepared. Some of the other shows I do with you, Phil, he just shows up like, yeah, what's the information? That, and he's like, I got my notes. He gave us notes. Yeah, he gave us all the notes. notes. You can't give away my trade secrets. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to give you a pat on the back. Well done, Phil. All right. Well, today we're talking about, obviously, episode one. And there's no discrepancy here because, obviously, there's a huge discrepancy in episode order. But there's no discrepancy. Arrival has to be the first episode we talk about because it, it is the first episode. Right. Um... Let's start with this. Uh, Steph Z, overall impressions, and then we'll move on to you, Meredith. Um, overall impressions. The first note that I wrote was it felt very James Bond-like, which I liked. I liked this. You're not getting all the information. There's a lot of subliminal information, which I really like. There's a lot of puzzle pieces being dropped, and you kind of have to put them together. Um, even how they open the episode with him driving in that awesome Lotus, and clearly he's going to, you know, give his reg- resignation. But it's if you would have never seen the show before, you would be like, oh, what's he doing? And then like later, it ties back to what he was doing and how he was feeling like great and free. And then he winds up in this village, and you're like, what's going on? It's kind of like the Stepford Wives, but not. And it's this crazy thing where he's stuck, and he thinks that he's going to be able to escape and get out, but clearly, the prisoner, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so, you know, I do, um, I think there's, I'm really excited for what's going to happen here. I mean, even though this is such a period piece when it's, you know, 45 years ago, there's certain things that, you know, with our culture, with the technology in these shows, there's certain things that tie into things that are happening today. So mm-hmm. I feel like it's a very, I'm super excited we're talking about it. And Meredith, for you. Well, so having watched it originally when I was probably 13, I obviously didn't understand a lot of the messages that were being put forth. I just thought it was a really quirky, weird British show that my godparents were showing me. Um, But having rewatched it uh, just recently, I was 
So one of the things that actually stood out for me with the first episode was how disjointed it was. And I know it's meant to be, well, it's not meant to be, it's because they kind of shot everything in two really tight segments and everything was kind of pieced together last minute, but it actually added to the disjointment that number six feels, having been thrown into this completely new world without any, you know, reason or rhyme behind it. So I, I feel like in a lot of ways, like while that might have not been a stylistic choice that the director has made, it, in hindsight, it actually works as a viewer to kind of like really just dis, like discombobulate you and make you feel very unease at being placed like, hey, I fell asleep or I, I was like getting ready to leave and then suddenly I'm knocked out and I wake up in this weird Stepford village. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, so I, 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 I'm excited about that. I'm excited to co or revisit this journey and see what number six uh, is up to again. And I forgot how much I liked Rover. <laughs> nah, yes, we'll certainly talk about Rover. And um, for me, I, had, I was first introduced to it in college and as part of a uh, you know, media studies class. And uh, I, I kind of fell in love with it and then took the initiative to watch it on my own. And uh, hence, you know, it, I was just always drawn to it. You know, I didn't, I never fully understood what it meant. And so um, part of the reason why we're digging into this is because we still to this day want information. And yes, that's a double play <laughs> um, that Steph Z will fully understand in, in, in by episode two or three. I, I feel like the, the I-N in capitalize and the rest of the word not in our handy dandy notes <laughs> meant something. So it I'm is. looking it forward does. to it. And also, while you guys are watching out there, if you guys want to tweet us at hashtag ABTV, the Pr prisoner, prisoner. Um, we'd love to interact with you guys, answer any questions, um, you know, follow along. Yeah, and I, I felt it was important for, you know, we'll kind of, this show, one of the reasons why it survived is because it's so personal. And so that's why I wanted to get your guys' initial thoughts. And uh, if you guys at home, take a minute, um, whether you're watching this live or not, let us know what draw, drew you mm -hmm. into this. You know, we'd, lo we'd love to see that. Um, so speaking of, uh, everyone said they were drawn in from the opening. So let's talk about this opening sequence because, you know, it becomes the, the title sequence for the rest of the episodes, just a little bit more condensed. Um, you love the Lotus seven, <laughs> you love the, uh, the, 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 um, disconfigurement, mm -hmm. but, um, so, you know, uh, as, as you're watching it, what, what do you gather from it? Well, I gathered, um, freedom being taken away in a sense like when you're driving i mean there's uh, i mean i actually own a convertible as well so there's nothing f more free than feeling when you're driving with the wind in your hair you know <laughs> what i mean like i feel like that's such a free universal free visual yeah so you see that and then that quickly is taken away so that was kind of my initial like oh man <laughs> what happened to him and you know uh for me, you know, it, when he walks into th there's, you know, there's a, there's a formality to it. You know, he's, you know, he's giving an official resignation, and so everything's kind of official. Except when he gets there, he's he's screaming. What, well, what do you interpret? There's from that? a bit of anti-establishment in that moment. I mean, he is he's sitting there and and saying, "I'm done with this. I am over this. I am not." You know, and, and we see this reinforced with the, the punch card being filed. You know, he, he, without saying it in words, it's when he first says, I'm not a number. That's to me anyways. All right. Mm -hmm. What were you first time watching it? What did you... From what, when what, he gave the letter? Yeah, because, I mean, he, again, he's, he's screaming here at, um, at, at somebody. We don't quite know. You know, we, we assume that it's his boss or somebody. Well, but... As a first time viewer, if you don't know the story, you don't know that that's his boss until later when you see number two asking him why did like about the resignation and that's when you put it together. So I'm just watching in the in the space of this guy's free. What did he just have to deliver? Who is this other person? You know what I mean? And then you put it together and you realize clearly something happened he wasn't treated the right way. You know what I mean? Like, and he was sticking up for himself and having that moment of, you know, screw you. I have a question. Did you get, did, did you get that he was like a spy at first or what was your like first impressions of I what got, his role was? I got that there were, that he was a spy mm -hmm. just because of the way that it was shot. Like I said, like the opening scene seemed very <laughs> James Bond like to me. Very, you know how it's just, it just felt like mm -hmm. it. Like I could have, turn this on and been like, oh, what James Bond movie is this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I did get that. And we'll, 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 we'll talk a little bit about the parallels of James Bond, uh, uh, definitely in this episode. Right. Um, now, you know, as soon as he, there, there's, there's a lot of signs and symbols, right? We have the mm -hmm. Hearst uh, following him. And then as soon as he gets home, he's still kind of 
in that hectic mode, you know, he's, he's grabbing any things that he can, and, and, and we don't know where he's going, but, uh, again, what, what, what can you take from that? Is he escaping? What is he trying to do? I mean, I just, I felt he was running away. I felt there was something very urgent that he needed to go and not be where he was anymore. Um, and it's, it's just really one of those, he's like, I am running away. I don't want to be involved in this anymore. I'm mm -hmm. done. I've had it. I, I agree with that. I feel like he was done. He had it. And I also think that in grabbing the certain stuff, he was, that was the only stuff that he needed. Like he didn't need all the rest of the stuff that he had, or maybe he, he just needed these few things to feel at home. And I almost got a sense of that because, you know, we get that he's a spy and all, you know what I mean? Because of all this, maybe he's always on the run. Maybe he doesn't have a home. Maybe he can't have all the, the normal stuff because his life is such a secret, so to speak. So he was just, there was only a few things I felt that he, I don't know, maybe I'm an overpacker, that's mm -hmm. why. But like, you know, it seemed like <laughs> yeah. he only grabbed a few things that he needed. And then there was the, the photo of the beach, yeah. The, yeah, the resort, which to me was just like, this is where I want to go next. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's, I want to ask you guys in that sense, so, so the, the beach and all mm -hmm. that, right? Um, anytime you get out of the business, you know, in typical genre fashion, you have to become anonymous, right? You mm -hmm. go away in the, you know, an island or whatever. That's the typical thing. But, um, you know, in, in hindsight, where is he going to go? Because the only way that, you know, he says he's not a number, he's not a free man, he's a free man. So is the only way to be that is to be anonymous and not part of anything, not, not be known? Be, you know, because well, we've seen that. I think it's interesting because as a spy, you kind of already are anonymous. You lead yeah. so many different lives. And I, I almost wonder if, oh, this is actually just something I'm touching on in general. I, I, I wonder if there's something about, and we see in later, uh, you know, later this episode and even later episodes that why he fights so hard against being an established uh, number, a, a single individual, because he has actually led a life of, anonymity for so long that I don't think he even would know how to handle having to establish something. So I think if he runs away to be anonymous, that's probably what he's most comfortable at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have, I would agree with that. Okay. I would because it makes complete sense because people don't, it's not like when you're a spy, you can't go home and be like, so you know what I did today? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's yeah. had to keep everything within and he's had to have this duel or two or three or four double lives to whoever or, you know, is involved yeah. in certain different aspects of his life. And that's a good point because, you know, he lives alone, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, even as a first time viewer, it's not like, the, you know, you, you might assume that maybe he's running away for like he's leaving his family, but you but, don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think yeah, so. There's no, no indication in the that. home. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not like he grabs one last photo of like, here's the yeah. kids. Or looks at it. He didn't like, you know, looks yeah. at it and is like, mm, sorry, I got to go. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's just like, I got my stuff. So, yeah, I think, I think that's a fair point to establish. Um, and so, uh, you know, he's, he's taken, uh, he's gassed up and he awakes. And uh, originally in the script, it was supposed to be not exactly like his, his house. Mm -hmm. But um, they altered it, obviously, in the, in the actual episode, that it is his full house. And the only thing that is different is he wakes up in this village. Yeah. And here Creepy. we are. I, it's, I just love the village itself because of the, the bright colors and the, oh, it's, it's very animal farm when you yeah. think about it. Like, it's just so, like, Stepford Animal Farm, everything about it is just so off-putting because it's so perfect. It's kind of funny. Yeah, I love the village show. I wouldn't mind going there for like a weekend yeah. or a week, even a week. Yeah. And one of the things that stood out most to me, like in taking in the whole village was the, the map of the village. Like, mm -hmm. I love that he was like, no, I need a bigger map. You know, and it's <laughs> like the same thing. Like, just, just a mountains. bigger map. Yeah, yeah. And it was like this perfect, like everything you need. Like, mm -hmm. here's some mountain. You know, it's just, it was all contained. Uh, and it did look beautiful. It was very deceiving in a way because you would think you'd want to be there like if i woke up there i'd be like sweet yeah. like, who scooped me up and took me away yeah and then you know uh and that that was the whole thing we'll we'll kind of talk about the full behind the scenes making of it but um a lot of people went here whether it's uh the beatles manager whether it's mm -hmm. um hg wells you know they that's what this it was intended as a getaway um but obviously they flipped that me you know the meaning of the, of a getaway and you know because you, you said it perfectly a weekend trip mm -hmm. right I don't think you'd want to be there for longer than that. I might be able to do a week. <laughs> Look, I didn't see I any. Was, it's like there's a few couple cocktails. things to do there. Yeah, yeah, you know, they have the, the stone ship. Yeah, go for a helicopter yeah. ride. Run did away you, from a ball. <laughs> yeah. 
let me ask you this specifically um they made obviously you know we we, we saw the map but as mm -hmm. it's shot we never fully get a sense of the full geography mm -mm. Right. um did you feel like you knew this place even though again just based off of the map it, there wasn't yeah, I mean, I feel like there was something familiar about it. You know, it was like this village set aside, like this mountainside village that has, you know, the water near. You know, there wasn't, you know, it felt very common as a getaway place. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like we didn't really get the full scope mm -hmm. of it. Um, but I think, again, that like kind of also added to the whole feeling trapped uh, because we didn't really get to see like there's no big wide shot of the whole area, you know, yeah. a lot of tight, close, you know, here's this, here's that. And I feel, you know, that really kind of kept me feeling enclosed and imprisoned. Absolutely. You know, and, you know, so you're, you're very right on that. And then Steph going to yours, uh, in, in terms of, it felt familiar. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when you look at the map, right, it, the sea, who doesn't know, if you mm -hmm. understand English, you know what a sea is, you right. know what the mountains are, yeah. you know right. what this is. So it, it, yes, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I know these words. Right. It's familiar, but different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah creepier yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah. um you know but you can understand i mean you know one of the things that that always stood out to me was how quick he was to um to be worried about where he was and and you know i don't know his background um but he i guess he has a right to be you know from his perspective again i would be like oh this is cool but prisoner obviously oh, not well Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, one of the things that, like, I thought it was weird they never tried to play off the fact, like, oh, no, look, you're on your beach resort. This is where you you just fell and hit your head or you forgot. Like, they never, the the powers that be, number two and, and so forth, never tried to BS him. They mm -hmm. never tried to, like, make it seem it was anything but, you know, you're here, you have to deal with it. Just learn to accept it and fall in line. And I and I found that really interesting uh, because it it just kind of set the precedent that, you know, you have to accept this. And, and it really, to me, that set the main tone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really interesting point that you bring up because when, you know, I feel like if you wanted to get information from somebody and you put them in this new, you know, creepy, weird environment that you might want to do a little stroking in order to get the information mm -hmm. out. So, you know, you could play that both sides. But yeah, I mean, it was right away, you know, if I was there, Right away when you heard like creepy things over the loudspeaker everywhere. I mean, I, I don't know. I'd be a fan of the doors opening for me. Like I'm okay with yeah, that. You I know, like grocery stores yeah. opening up for me. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like when it it was very que creepy very quickly there. Here, here's what I will say about that. I mean, part of it is if um it, it almost is a double play, right? Um, there's a quote in um a most violent year. This is the, the the hardest thing you'll ever have to do is look someone in the eye and tell them the truth. So in many ways, they're telling him the truth. And yet not, yeah. right? And so right. it's that double play of like, you know, pretend that we're truthful with you, but in reality we're not, and because we w we need you to be a hundred percent truthful with us. Yeah, it's like I mean, they I think they give number six his credit that they're not gonna they're not gonna pull the wool over his eyes. They're not going to try to insult him in direct ways. You know, it's gonna be a more like, you know, and and, and as we see later later in the episode, and I won't spoil that yet. Is uh, what they do with a certain character yeah. to try to you know, get him to open up. You know what was interesting for me as a first time viewer is I found myself questioning, like it was clear that they wanted some sort of information from him and he had these relationships in this past, but it wasn't clear to me whether or not all the other people in the village were taken there for the same reason or they were just there. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's hard to say who, like, are they all former spies? Are some of them, you know, also, like, part of the, the village management? Like, how many of them are, are, are yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, why like, are they there and, and, and what are their roles? Because he seems to be, you know, a pretty important character. Uh, clearly, he's the main character. But you know what I mean? Like, he seems to be someone that has, inf like, they want to extract information from him. So are all these other people there by default, you know, besides yeah. the people that are working there? Like, why are they there, too? Why or, did he yeah. wind up with them? Did some of the elderly choose to just retire there? Because it's like, hey, we can just get taken care of versus, you know? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, we'll discuss all that. Uh, so, um, no, I was, again, and there's so much to there's discuss. So much. I know. So, so good. Much. Um, so, uh, you know, our number, we don't know his n number yet. We don't know his name. He gets a phone to go and meet up and, um, it wasn't originally the green dome, right? It was, uh, it was supposed to be something else. And then because of the way it looked and they wanted to keep with very, um, very vague terms, mm -hmm. the green dome. I mean, that's what a title, 
right? And that's where we meet number two um, as uh, Pop Goes the Weasel plays. <laughs> Not creepy at all. Not yeah. creepy at all. So uh, what did you, you know, uh, meeting number two for the first time, what did you guys like about this scene? What do you think was established? What did you learn? You want me to go first? Oh, no, I mean, I, I, I'm always so nice. I'm like, I'm going to defer to you. <laughs> yeah, you got um, it. I, so the thing I liked about it was it really set up just kind of an authority figure. It kind mm -hmm. of set up like, you know, and again, going back to what I said earlier, this is kind of where we start to see the, we're going to try to put the line out there and, and tell you this is what's going on in, in their own, you know, way of withholding information. Um, and it really is just kind of, this is what sets the conflict up. And this is where, you know, me as a viewer and, started watching and I was like, okay, this is the bad guy. I can't trust him. I also, at that point is when I started questioning uh, what side they were really on in terms of, is this really the British government or is this something else? Well, so let's, you know, uh, step, go ahead, Steph, and then we can talk about that question specifically. Uh, for me, it just established that he was there for the wrong reasons. Like I felt that right away in the scene where they were showing that they knew so much about him, like how they're like two eggs, you know what I mean? The chair got up. There was just so much that, like it, it showed that they had been looking specifically for him. That, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like it, there was no accident that he was there. There was no question that they wanted something specific from me. And for me at that point, I was like, oh, this is gonna be bad. Like they're, they don't want him to help. It's like they almost wanna use him for something. That's kind of what I felt when I saw that scene. Absolutely. And, you know, so to the, one of the biggest questions raised in this portion is whose side is the village on, right? You know, we, we, and everyone's given numbers. So who's number one, but which side is the village on? And, and um, you, because of earlier stuff, you could be like, okay, these are the communists. Or the fact that they have so much information on him to begin with and so fast, especially after his resignation, points to the fact that they could be, you know, the, the, British government and saying, hey, we, you know, you, are you defecting? Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, that, so, so, you know, that, that in, obviously isn't answered, certainly not here, but that's the question that's raised. And, and I would argue because of the amount of information that they have, you're led to believe that perhaps it is the British government, but we'll find, you know, there's ironically yeah. just in this very same episode, contradicting evidence. Exactly. So, right. So I, I enjoy or then them. we can be really weird and also start pulling from Danger Man. Yes. Yes. By the way, we'll have to talk about that at some point too. Absolutely. Full disclosure: I have not seen a single episode of Danger Man, unfortunately. I feel that should be our next after this. We're gonna after go this. this. Yeah, we're gonna the, go back. We're gonna go back even further. The prologue. Yep, the prologue. <laughs> In hindsight, maybe we should have done that mm -hmm. one first and then gotten to this one. Nah, this is uh, fine. Double time. Um, all right. And what I, what I love is um, it's one of those, you know, uh, it, again, it's a very set up sort of um, episode, right? But we set up two things. One, we set up that there's a helicopter and we set up the village. And going back to your earlier point, yes, we see the village from an aerial, aerial, aerial view. And you would think that we would see all of it, but mm -hmm. we don't. We still only get chunks, right. never a full thing. And, and I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. That kind of almost makes me, that leads me to believe it's a secret village. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, to I mean, some if, extent it if is. If no one can get out, can people get in? That's what I mean. Like, does anyone else no. know it's there? That's a good question. I don't know. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Do you, you know? Do you guys know the answer? You I, oh, you know, that's that's something. Uh, yeah. Save that question for later episodes because yeah, okay. we'll certainly debate it. You mm -hmm. know. Okay. Um, and by the way, that um, one of the things that I I can definitely can say if you're free, you know you don't find out where the village is, and that's unfortunately something that we will have to spoil uh, the location of the shoe. Yeah. But that was never said until the very end. Yeah. Well, aren't we going there for our finale episode? Episode 17, we're going to go shoot from London? I thought that was... Oh! That's why I signed up for this. Maybe. <laughs> I like this plan. I'm happy to be a part of it. Only, but you you guys will be abducted there. I'm oh, okay that's... I mean, that. yes. That's Blindfold it, yeah. me and take me. Happy. See, that's... I can't Feed have you be happy about this. I need to... I'll scream. That's go. almost... That's almost like... The, the part of it is if people are happy there, it defeats the purpose. So it's almost like you should act happy. Like, oh, thanks for the eggs, man. Yeah, I'm like, mm, secretly plotting to kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's that's a form of a rebellion that we'll see if it's yeah. explored. Um, okay. So a, as we're in the um, the helicopter, right, we're getting the protocol of the village and, and everything. What, anything that stood out to you? I mean, it was, again, fairly, for a town, 
everything seemed to s- run smoothly. Yes, some minor differences here and there, but that's you can call that cult- cult- cultural. Mm-hmm. It stood out to me that no one seems to question the way this village is run, except him at the current time. Okay. They've all kind of just succumbed to the way that it is. And maybe it's because they've been there for a while and they've all tried to escape before. And who knows? You know what I mean? But there's no... Like, everyone there is pretty much just robotic to a sense. Yeah. And yeah. nobody nobody does anything for themselves. Everything Absolutely. is done for them. Yeah. They have maids. They have taxi services. They... I don't... I mean, I can't even think of a time when I see someone cooking for themselves. And Sign me up. <laughs> You're like, I'm just ready. Give me my number. I'm number 15 right I'm here. Come 15. on. <laughs> well, that was one, you know, uh, one of the things um, toward, later on that I was going to talk mm-hmm. about was the idea of childishness. But, you mm-hmm. know, since we're yeah. on it, let's talk about it now. Um, you're right. There's no one does anything for themselves. I mean, on the announcements, ice cream. Yeah. Go get your yeah. ice cream. How how more childish can you be? You know, so, and, and conversely, uh, number six is treated like a child and in many ways like a child he has to prove himself to his parents that he is an individual uh-huh, I like where you're going there See? Uh-huh. Um, but you guys want to expand upon that further as I find my notes on this so I can oh I, I, yeah, I didn't mean to jump ahead I was just like no, just in ahead. terms of the, in the protocol of the village I just thought that was interesting how no one did anything and, and, and maybe a little bit less on the whole idea of, of childishness is, is that in a way to indoctrinate people, uh, to get them more comfortable is that you take, you know, and again, like a, I guess almost like a child trying to find some identity, you take away the things, you take away the things that they do to make them feel like individuals and that further isolates them and conforms them. And it's, it's just a, another form of that um, manipulation to get them to be where they want to be. Um, and that's just something I, you know, from the announcements to here is your new uh, job assignment you know at the at the one place or here's the one cafe in town it's just you know to me that's the one thing that kind of struck out more than anything is that they're taking away every ounce of your individuality and and i going on to the whole um you know treating everyone like children uh i do, that does set up a bigger picture for number six and how he has to reestablish his identity absolutely and you know there's so many symbols there right um we mentioned Pop Goes the Weasel um, in the labor exchange. They're singing, they're, uh, singing the, the tune of uh, Boys and Girls Come Out to Play. Um, you mentioned no one does anything for themselves. And so, yeah, very very childlike. And um, th- this happens a little bit later, but in the hospital, um, there's almost like a grandmother over him, and she calls him son. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also felt, again, with the childish, you know, just to add a little bit to what you were saying, Mary, it's like, I feel like it's almost brainwashing. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, it's it's not, I don't believe the intention is to make it easy and make these people feel like they're kids. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's very much set up, you know, to take away the individuality and to brainwash them. I wouldn't even be surprised if there's subliminal messages in stuff that's happening. Yeah. Um, maybe you guys know that because I got a smile. But you know what I mean? Like, is the ice cream laced? I don't know. <laughs> it might be. Is it funny ice cream? You actually yeah. could be right. Yeah. Who knows? You could be right. And, but you, you're right in the sense that, uh, you know, children are the most easily molded. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. So, yeah. Yeah, because if you notice, very few people fight. There's a, We see one scene in the in the, the walking through scene. the village where yeah. the, there's someone falling out of line. Well done. Uh, Waldo got a lot. Uh, yeah. Just wearing red and white stripes, man. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Waldo? There he is. And then he the got, rover. like, suffocated by the big Zorb ball. <laughs> so, yeah, so, okay, we're on Rover. Let's talk okay. about Rover. This is, this is, we're introduced to Rover, and there's so much history. In the, I mean, th- this could be an episode in itself talking about this thing, right? And uh, the picture uh, that we're looking at, it, it's not from this portion of the episode. It's a little bit later on, but um, it's the best I could find. <laughs> uh Okay, so you called it the big orb ball. Zorb ball. Zorb ball. Zorb. I mean, do you know what a zorb ball is? You can actually get in the middle of it and like walk around. Oh, inside is that it. like you see them in Vegas? Yeah, like the enter- yeah. Like so like a hamster man. ball. Yeah. So you, you, you're, you're <laughs> excuse me. Yeah, but it's fun. So you know what I mean? Like, but <laughs> this you can, rover. This rover's not fun. Rover's definitely not fun, <laughs> but it kind of made me feel like that. Fair enough, and uh, and Meredith, I mean, this this was something that you wanted to speak to heavily. Well, so one of the things I I noticed again on rewatching it is how much it resembled a weather balloon, and how it 
hearken back to a lot of like the the UFO and um, and not just terms of in like alien UFOs, but like actual military unidentified uh, planes and technology they were conducting at the time that this felt very real to me in a modern day sense that this is just like one of those elements that they brought about and it kind of explored like other technology at the time because I know one of the things we were talking about is the use of technology Um, and that's something I know we're going to go into further is just you know how technology and the progression of technology uh, is going faster than than man can handle at this point and I feel like this is almost like a, a reminder of like this is government playing with something outside of their control yeah and uh alexis our wonderful engineer there there's a photo of um of ufos and things like that again we, we were supposed to talk about it later but since we're yeah. on it I, I, if you can bring that up for at least the viewers um because here's the thing i looked at you know i the picture we're about to bring up it, it has all these kind of government airplanes and the way they look and um the the weather balloon the symbol mm-hmm. for it is like a ufo yeah, and and I found that to be the most I- uh, interesting thing, um, part of it. So if again, if you, by the way, um, we're showing various photos. So if you're not necessarily watching us, um, there is a link in the description for you to download all of these photos. It's a zip file. I promise it's not a virus. I'm not. You know, we're not out to get you. We're not number two or number one or whatever <laughs> you believe. It's just you know, if you're listening, we want you to have the ability to look at these photos and, and see them. Um, so there you go. So you I like that the Star Trek Enterprise is also a weather balloon. And Batman. And Batman. <laughs> Interesting. There you go. Uh, but yeah, no, I just, I, I, one of the things I, I found, because I, I, I mean, I don't know. I like, I like aliens, so I like to talk about aliens. Me too. Aliens. Uh, yes. We should have an alien show. We totally <laughs> But is, uh, just, just the, you know, the way they made Rover just this, you know like uniform object this unsettling thing that you know and again this is more of a british show than than it is american so i am kind of imposing my own uh like cultural uh history onto it but it just it really added this element of of sci-fi to this film that they're like how how does a, a government in the 60s have technology like this and so i just i i thought it was a nice if nothing else a nice nod to what was going on over you know in the in um Pensacola at the time, New Mexico, and, and a lot of the, the sightings, the weird sightings. Because I actually remember as a child watching this, I, I was like, oh, my God, is this an, are there aliens? Is that who captured them? I actually yeah. thought, before I got further into it, I thought it was about aliens. So I think, but now as an adult, I, I kind of really, I wonder. I wonder about the choices. Well, you know, sorry not to cut no. you off, but, Go like, ahead. again, it's, it's, it's spherical, right? Mm-hmm. So um, we'll certainly talk about kind of the global village as it may be, mm-hmm. you know, um, as represented in later episodes. But you have that idea in the control room we see not only the the, uh, you know the spinning spheres and things like that we see a map of the universe kind of behind them and so it's you know there's evidence that could support that theory of like you know Mm -hmm. especially early on where you you were trying to piece together any meaning you can right my thing too that it struck for me is that i wonder if this show would have been on american television i feel like it would have been more censored i feel like when we see things from europe and shows that are on bbc or whatever network this was on it's more truthful like they give you more information they're not as censored with government and things going on and i feel like across the board they are so i wonder if well, we'll certainly talk about that. Yeah. It's interesting because okay. it's not BBC. Yeah, it's I- oh. ITC. ITC, mm-hmm. and, and, and it did air in the U.S. So, um, so we'll certainly talk about that towards the uh, a little bit. Well, also, end. just I, I I can add some flavor from insight on like how British intelligence works. So I think it's kind of an I, I don't know. I think I think this is definitely a very anti-establishment TV show. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. It's, and I don't think that we would see. Yeah. we would have seen them create that show here in that time. It yeah. was yeah. much more like. We are strong. We are America. Well, so that's like they don't want you to question because this show is opening the doors to mm-hmm. question things, and which which is funny because in the village they're trying to brainwash you so that you don't question things. They almost not only they taking away your identity, but they're taking away your power because if you don't want to think, if they force you to not think outside the box, you think that that's just how world exists rather than questioning like why is this big Zorb ball yeah. flying around. <laughs> why can you take over the helicopter? Like, why can you do these things that, you know what I mean? I yeah. feel like it's very much breaking down power as well. You're right. No, I, I, I 100% agree. Um, shoot, I was, I forgot what Sorry, I was going to say. Sorry, I just, right. no, 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 it was, it, you were, you were, you were, you were flowing well and you had a great statement and then uh, I was going to add to it and then I forgot. 
Um, oh, I did, you know, so to that point, right? Um, kind of Rover, mm-hmm. for, for all intents and purposes, this was an accident, right? That's, that, the, mm-hmm. that's the beauty of it to me. And it's, it, you know, it's one of those things that it was a happy accident. And you can say like, oh, just things kind of align and they happen this mm-hmm. way. But if, if you're like these guys, that was very much the intent. And so they were looking for these things. And so Rover, a mechanical machine that was supposed to, you know, be there on the set that day, mm-hmm broke down I, I believe it went into the water and yeah. never came out and so they're like okay how do we fix this I mean, you know we need a solution we need something and they all uh i, I think it was uh, bernie williams uh they all look, they looked up at the screen what, what about that <laughs> and um yeah again it's it's completely happenstance but when you're looking for ideas and solutions mm-hmm. This is what comes of it, and it's one of the greatest talking points of this show. And that's what something I absolutely love about it is that we, as viewers, impose our own thoughts. And even, and even, you know, fifty years later, we're still imposing like our modern day ideas of yep. uh, supervision on this. So I think it's it's really that's why I'm really I'm so I keep going back. I'm so excited for your your opinion on all yeah. this. Well, it is it is <laughs> very true because if you really think about it, it's almost like. The village, and this is going to be maybe a little bit left, but the village is is like our government in certain ways. It puts lots of restrictions on it. It's almost also religion-like. It's almost also cult-like. There's a lot of mm-hmm. ways that people still act that, I mean, they might not put you in a village and talk over a loudspeaker and do your laundry, but they still try and do certain things in order to make you act in a certain way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And part of that, I mean, you, you know, you could call it democratic in the sense of like, you know, the, mm. you know, what that's what you know helping yeah. you know yeah the, you can argue one way or the other in terms of politics republican versus democratic and obviously all the other spectrums well on the on the other on the other end of it you know this could also be say this is the idealized version of communism yeah. where yeah. everyone works together for ever and everyone's equal and in, in almost every way except for you know there's always going to be the people who are in charge but right which is the ultimate failure of communism yeah, yeah so absolutely absolutely mm-hmm. see that's a great point why this could be um it just adds question to and it's it. kind of funny too because i don't know if you know thinking in retrospect it's like do, do the people that are creating a show like this think that 45 years later they're going to be sparking this conversation uh, about you know, life and communism and, and society and government. Like, I think that's pretty amazing that that's what happens from there. Like, oh, let's have this little spy show. You know, like, I'm sure there's a lot more yeah. thought into that than that. But, you know, sometimes yeah. there's certain shows that are worth talking about 45 years later because they played into, like, does life imitate art or mm-hmm. does art imitate life? That whole yeah, game. Absolutely. Um, so kind of uh, getting back to the, the story. And again, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll t- talk about more of these things as well. I mean, there's... We're only like on the first page of many. <laughs> Sorry, um, everyone. We're going to be so here to like to six say. o'clock tonight. No? Yeah. <laughs> That's just for the first episode. But um, okay, so we, we get a glimpse of the, uh, someone in his house, we, um, and it's we eventually find out that it's the maid, right? Mm-hmm. And um, this is, you know, um, again, I, I look at this as two episodes in one that has to present the formula. And so one of the formulaic elements is that there's always going to be a female character that he will not have a romance with, but that um, is part of the establishment, but sympathizes with him. And um, and and we got that. I mean, she broke down in tears and said, "You know, help help me. Yeah, give right. me anything. I'm going to be saved." And I, I thought his his line of questioning is, "You know, do you really believe that, knowing what you've been given?" So. Yeah. I agree. I, I like the the first time we actually see the maid as well when he kind of yells at her mm-hmm. and is like, I don't want to be part of this. I don't want you to do this. And then she comes back again, you know, showing that, well, that's, you know, quote unquote, what she's supposed to be doing. I mean, we, of course, find out that she's literally just trying to extract information for him for number two. But, um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I felt like everyone's drinking the Kool-Aid there. Yeah. They really are. Well, d- you know... Do you believe that she's been there since, you know, her childhood, as she states? If that's the case, then this has been going, this operation has been going on for 20 plus years. And that's, uh, that's, do we see any other yeah. kids there? Only young. Yeah. Yeah, it's, really it's, young. I, to, and to me, the, the whole maid just pulls into question, you know, again, I was asking earlier, is she part of the the establishment or is she a, a go-between is she this you know creature that maybe was brought in because she herself was a spy but you know 
fell in line so much that she was given more responsibility and and through that maybe a little bit more freedom you know, yeah. they kind of dole out little bits of freedom by giving you more power over other people. Oh, see, I think the maids are part of the establishment mm -hmm. and they're there to look through information, to gather information and report back to they're, them. They're too. spies on spies. Yeah, they're yeah. almost like spies. Exactly. They're spies on spies because they would have the access. They it wouldn't you wouldn't think that it's happening because I don't know that he both he knows that she's going to run back to them. I mean, yes, he gets that she's not going to be free and tells her, like, wake up. Like, even if you get information from me, it's not going to help you. But I don't think he in his head goes as far as thinking that the maid is working for number two. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and kind of going further, right, he breaks the radio, which which was a scene stolen from uh, Mark's brother's duck soup, by the way. Um, <laughs> But, you know, so uh, we'll kind of talk about the, you know, him mm -hmm. driving over. That's a whole separate conversation we'll have. But the idea that, you know, every one of these people, right, whether or not the maid is, it has a higher purpose or not, just let's talk about her as a maid and then this guy as an electrician and, you know, cab driver and this, this, and this. Would you ever get the sense that these guys, after they're done with work, would ever go to the cafe and have a drink together or enjoy time together, anything beyond their job? No. No. And that's part of like, everyone's treated almost like a, they have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And if they don't fulfill that they're purpose, like they have no. Like robots. Yeah. yeah they, no sen no individuality beyond that. Mm -hmm. And they are, you know, they are literally defined by the job that they do. Yeah, that's pretty sad. They all need to like have a whiskey <laughs> together, lighten up. <laughs> so many great things in the village, but not, you know, you can't enjoy any of them. No. So. Um. But um, so that for me, this is kind of after after this little moment, that's where the first part of the episode really ends. And then, you know, we go and meet an, uh, a friend who is Cobb. <laughs> um, oh, actually, well, uh, going back, it starts with because he Rover yeah. gets him. Yeah, he attempts to to escape. Yeah. It does a couple of times. And it, let me ask you this. Was that the smartest play? Because, I mean, you know, y y you've seen what possibly can happen i mean is he just testing the waters i was, I was just gonna say i mean as as his his level he would he would just test to see like i don't even feel that that was a real attempt at escape i think it was him just seeing what the boundaries were mm -hmm. yeah i have to agree i think he's smart enough to know he's mm -hmm. being surveillance yeah so uh, but in the same sense yeah. he could have done it in a different way mm -hmm. and he could have like made it like he was playing by their rules and found out that information so that it wasn't such a surprise when he tries to escape yeah mm -hmm. yeah um well regardless he uh, he ends up in the hospital and the only man to get a name in this entire episode Cobb mm. yeah. yeah and uh, we meet Cobb in the hospital who's uh who's you know, he seems to know very well, but um, but was over in Germany and ended up here. Mm. So, so Interesting. if he was just in Germany, amazing how he ended up there so fast. Hard to say where the village is. Well, let me ask yeah. you, is it, was he in West Germany or was he in East Germany? Uh, they, uh, I know they don't specify. I know. I feel like West. I mean, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I would argue that, you know, perhaps... You know, and this goes to the, again. So the the thing that foils it is, I think he was in East Germany as a spy, mm -hmm. and then just defected because a lot of you know stories at the time were about that. And and that's something actually we should maybe ad address that the East and West Germany were very separate. Yes, that that yeah. was you know the wall was still up in place at this point. Very so much so. I have to, I had actually had explained this to my roommate the other day. She is so about young the Berlin Wall. She did not understand. So well, go ahead. I mean, you I know, mean well, let's well, talk about the. Well, I mean, just post post World War Two. Um, you know, Germany was divided. Uh, you had East and West Germany. The Berlin Wall was was brought up, and uh, one side was more democratic and and going forward, while the other was more Soviet controlled. Yeah. So I mean, that's and that's why again why we see. There is that that concern in the prisoner, and why that's such an overarching problem is that you have to wonder what side of the quote unquote iron curtain you yeah. fall on. Are you with or against the Soviets? And it was always interesting to me how much um, the idea of of just one wall could mm -hmm. be, you know, represented not only not only um, Berlin, but then Germany, and then the world. Yeah, right. And, you know, and so very much so, like the village. Yes, we're we're on a you know everything's local, mm -hmm. but it's not. It goes beyond just local. Right. So. But uh, yeah, so Cobb being East German or in East Germany and, and defecting, uh, 
could could be a strong possibility. Yeah. Yeah. It's um um and it's uh, you know it's interesting, you know, uh, I, I think for the purposes of time, I think mm -hmm. this is ultimately why they did it was, you know, we were kind of taken through this hospital. Um and we see we see the gibberish and whatever else. We see the means that they're willing to go mm -hmm. to um to um you know, try to break someone, and then we find out that uh, there's been a suicide. Hmm. We're told so, there's a suicide. Yeah. Yes. Clearly, yes. <laughs> Cobb is not dead. And by the way, in the original script, the lines were reversed because uh, the doctor says what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, he fell out the whatever it is, right? And the lines were in the original script were reversed. Oh. Mm, look at you over there. So. He's got I don't the, know. He's got them all right there. Oh, I yeah. know. I've got, um, but if you guys want, mm -hmm. we'll sh uh, there's a link, again, in the description of all the scripts, um, the order. You know, you guys didn't make the order. But I, I, it took me um, a long time, uh, and I, f I was able to buy the prisoner script books. So if you're I interested in that, just uh, look it up online. Go to the, uh, you know, and there's, there's a few copies still left. When I was doing it, it was not as easy to find these things. Wow. So, um, I always wanted the actual physical book, but the but the other scripts are actually free, so you can check those out. <laughs> I'm if like you don't amazed want the book. at how into this you are. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I'm into. Mm -hmm. I watched one episode and did you know some research, a few hours of research, and I mm -hmm. I get it and I understand it, but I just well, part of it cute, is Phil. you know you know part of it is um, a number one. Meredith and I have never hosted, <laughs> yeah, right. So right. if I'm gonna, and so I wanted her to you know I didn't want to let her down, right, and I wanted to like. No, I love it. Level. I have so much respect for you, and I I love when people geek out. It's I know. Sad. And then number two, you know, I knew I yeah. I knew if we were gonna do this, I could not and would not do a disservice. That's why mm -hmm. it took me a long time to find Meredith. Right. And then you know, and and then when you came along, I knew you would have a respect for it. Right. That even if you hadn't seen the episodes, you would still appreciate it and things like that. And so um, I knew, you know, because again, I. There's so many fans that love this yeah. that it would be a huge disservice. It would be a spit in their face like, to just say, like, oh, yeah, here we are. You know, we've done no research whatsoever. And right, right, we're just right. talking about and, it. And, guys, like, true story. I was living in Atlanta at the time, and um, suddenly I passed out and woke up here in the studio. So, I mean, that's how Phil found me. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, true it story. Was, it was a calling. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, this. Sorry. Sometimes we hear things over the loudspeaker, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, speaking of uh, new friends, our new number two, right? So this yes. is this is uh, something that uh, that establishes itself for coming weeks, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't, you know, sorry to spoil it for everybody in that sense, but you know, again, it's it, it's presenting these things so you're not weirded out in future episodes that right. there's going to be a number two if something fails. Right. Yeah. Well, and he he just he walks back in demanding answers, and lo and behold, new there is a new man sitting in number two's chair, and it's just like. I mean, it's jarring. It's like you expect to see someone, and now it's not that person, and they still like. No, I'm number two now. You accept it and move on. Right. And what is that you know, so for you? So clearly, for me, so clearly that number two. It's not like the three of us arrived, and it's like number one, two, three, and that mm -hmm. sticks with you. It's number two is a uh, like a a job. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's a yeah. placement in this. I want to say government because it seems like government to me, just like a place in this government. Like he's the vice president, you know yeah. what I mean? Or whatever mm -hmm. they would say. And so it doesn't matter. That doesn't stick, which again shows the lack of individuality. It's like you don't even, not only are you not a person, <laughs> but you don't even get to keep your number. Yeah. It's true. It's just where you fit in that day of mm -hmm. what's happening, what course of events happen. That's, you know. And very what much, you're called. you know, and, and, and each person represents a different tactic of how to mm -hmm. go about certain things. And, right. you know, uh, I believe you, you'll learn more about the tactics of number twos later. This, you know, you don't quite know because it's not, you know, we don't really spend yeah. too much time with number two particularly. We just know it's a different person. Right. And they both fail. Yeah. But, right. but again, it's another good way of um, disinformation and, and making you feel on it like you know taking away your sense of security you know you had this one relationship with this one person now suddenly that is gone and now you it, it just it further is with the brain you know falls right. in line with the brainwashing yeah absolutely um how funny would it be if uh we came back next week and we had new hosts <laughs> <laughs> new I'd hosts all sad. around <laughs> we, we can just all wear wigs yeah, well, we That'd might do the, yeah. the new the new panel. We'll just wear t-shirts with the number on it and just <laughs> switch them around. Depending. Um, 
All right. And so, um, you know, after, after meeting the new number two, um, we're, we're as angry as can be after this. But we meet, um, you know, we go, the, the idea of, we'll talk about the idea of funeral and life and death and all that. But um, here is where we meet number nine, who, for all intents and purposes, is the exact opposite of number six. Right, six flipped mm-hmm. is nine. Right. He's male, she's female. He's on one side. She's we don't quite know. I'm sorry. I don't know if you guys got this, and I don't know if it plays at all. But when we are introduced to her, it looks like she's wearing a, a Snow White outfit. Okay. Like she, okay. I don't know I don't if that know. plays. But if you if but you go, go with it, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you could see in that outfit, like in the back, it's very Snow White esque. So is there? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if that. Pl- I don't know the time no, frame I, of when Snow White was established. But for me, as soon as I saw that, I was like, Princess Snow White. I'm like, what's what's the subliminal? <laughs> someone getting poisoned? Like, what's happening? <laughs> they you could See, be look, right. The show makes you question everything. Yeah. Everything. It did, mm-hmm. and I was like, how does this play? And it's not. Mm-hmm. You know, she wasn't in. Like all the men seem to be dressed somewhat country club esque. You yeah. know what I mean? And then she's got this like poofy Snow White coat on. I don't know. I just couldn't. I couldn't let go of the Snow White. Fair enough. There's no seven dwarves. No. No, but you, you, here's well, the thing. <laughs> well, maybe. 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 No, I will say you're right. I mean, what's what's most intri- intriguing to me is that you haven't seen the other episodes, and yet you're already questioning poison because mm-hmm. we. I. You know, this isn't a spoiler because the interesting part is how it happens. There will be methods of brainwash and poisons and drugs and things like See, that. See, I'm paying attention. <laughs> So that, but the fact that you picked that up without mm-hmm. us, you know, feeding it to you, yeah, that's I, yeah. you know, that's kudos to the show for setting up so <laughs> many weird things. Yeah. Um, anything else about, about you know? Uh, I want. I guess the question would be, as this develops, d- did you believe her motives? Did you trust her? Was she at, le- at the very least somewhat genuine, but perhaps afraid? Well, it's harder because I mean, given we'd already been shown a woman who was willing to cry on demand to get what she wanted uh, and run back to number two. Um, the one thing that was interesting was was her belying the romantic relationship she had with Cobb, uh, which again is an opposite from number six because he will never, you know, as yeah. we'll learn. Um, but I, I feel like she, she did come across a lot more sincere in her motives. Mm. But um, it's, I don't trust anyone though. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that I trusted her either. Mm-hmm. I wanted to, and then she, when she was talking to him, and she was like, "Here's the helicopter. Here's the watch." I was like, "Hmm, something's fishy." And is it? I don't know if, um, if I just missed this or didn't pick this up. But are the men all even numbers and the women odd numbers? Does that play at all? I, I'm not going to answer that. Mm-hmm. That's okay. something. No, but that's a good question. Yeah, that's a really that good we'll question. explore. Yeah. Okay. You know, and and you know what? Let's mm-hmm. see if it holds true for next episode, and then okay. if it continues yeah. on, we'll see. That's a good question. Um, I did my homework. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, you know, one of the, I, the prisoner says, you know, how did you, how did you come to get it and things like that? And she mm-hmm. says Cobb, and I think, um, was it a mistake that perhaps that Cobb or, or um, you know, the prisoner number six put a lot of weight and trust on Cobb? I, I mean. When you're thrown into a situation where everything you know is turned upside down, the one familiar face, it's going to it's going to be the thing that kind of cracks you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. the it's the one thing and that that you are. It's like okay, here's here's that slice of normality. Here's this one thing I can identify with. Here is me for the first time actually saying like a name, and I, I think that was. Um, that's a bug. Um, <laughs> like a little bug. Uh, like it's, they're, they're uh, it's listening a to us. It is. It is. Uh, but I think with with number six, he was put into a position where he had no other choice but to trust Cobb. Well, that was set up perfectly by then, then. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and especially because, you know, in that way, like, if you're from his perspective, if, if the only way that you can withhold information is to commit suicide, mm-hmm. then you kind of become trusting of the fact that, wow, he you know he wasn't going to tell right yeah so obviously not the case <laughs> no. uh you did not he did not but um interesting enough so okay so to that point right kind of um in terms of the helicopter escape and things like that as number two is is talking with number nine 
there's no indication that she knows that it wasn't, you know, for, for her purposes, it's still very real. Cobb is dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so uh, does that change your idea of number two, knowing what you, or not, I'm sorry, not number two, number nine, knowing that a Cobb is still alive and she was manipulated as well? No, I just think it's more of a, a bigger plan. Mm -hmm. I just think they're playing her. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think she's going to. You know, I mean, from from this episode, I don't get the impression that she is also part of the wheel, part of the mm -hmm. cog, if you will. But um, you know, it's and it's easier. The more people who buy into the tr truth that's given to them, it's going to be easier for them to play their part. So even if she is ultimately on the side of the village. Uh, her not need, she doesn't need to know everything to play her role out. Yeah. Um, so there's the, you know, th there's the helicopter escape. He's got everything. Rover's not going after him. And um, one of the more interesting parts of this uh, is that, you know, they, they edited it in such a way. Originally, it wasn't intended this way, but they edited it so that the helicopter's kind of going off into mm -hmm. the distance. And there she is looking at it. And here's our ex-admiral. You want to play chess? Uh, I don't know how to play. We're all pawns, honey. Yeah. Take a seat. Yeah. And um, I like that they, you know, you saw that in the editing process and were like, okay, we can juxtapose this to create some sort of meaning. Mm hmm So, um, any, do you guys want to give it a certain meaning? I mean, it's, it, for, for a little bit, you can say like, oh, it's pretty on the level. We are all pawns. Yeah. I mean, I think it was just to reestablish that, that they're all some way, shape, or form getting played, and that they're not only, like, if you think about the game of chess, the pawn is the least valuable player, so to speak. Yeah. So I feel like that's, you know, if one goes down, you know, you still got a lot of other that are exactly the same, that can do exactly the same job, which is, again, only move one step, unless it's the first step, of course, but you but, know what I mean? to that interesting point, right, and... and the this may or may not be a foreshadow, right? <laughs> um, while it is the least valuable, if it crosses a certain threshold, you, get, a re you get another player. You get whatever you want. Yeah. You can have the queen, you can have... Uh, yeah, ultimately, right. the pawn True. is, like, the most disposable, but also one of the most powerful uh, yeah. pieces in chess. So that's, you know, that's yeah. interesting to know. Well, that's... Is that him a little bit thinking out of the box? That, like, if they all rallied together, they could change something? I or is that just crazy? I almost feel like the Admiral is a strange, like, I don't want to say Oracle character, but he definitely feel, fills a trope of the the omnipotent character. He he kind of knows more than the rest of the viewers do, and I think he's, you know, there's something about that that's really interesting. Yeah, he's been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Like, he's been around the block, is what I get from him. A yeah. couple times. Or around the village. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, very much so. I mean, uh, you know, and then the, kind of the last part is uh, the helicopter comes back and uh, Cobb is revealed. Yeah. For you, what was that moment? <laughs> well, for me, number one, the helicopter scene was... You didn't see number one. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. He's oh, oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> for me, the first thing was the helicopter scene, again, was such a play to technology today. The fact that they were taking over the controls was very, you know, drone-like, or the things that are happening today, it was just, it seemed to me like, how could that happen back in the day? Like, clearly it probably couldn't, but now how everything's automatic, and you're not really in charge of where you think you're going was very strong for me. Um, and I did like that there was the reveal of Cobb, but I kind of wasn't shocked. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like when I saw him, I was like, okay, that makes sense. Like, it made sense that he was who number six saw, who jumped out the window, who committed suicide, who died for number nine. Like, he clearly has more of a key role in this, and I'm excited to see what that is. Um, but I was kind of excited to see him. Because I, I don't know, I, I want to feel like he's kind of a good guy. Oh. Well, he says, I'll be the same, yeah. so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that's so, and again, like more little know. red herrings there, like yeah. when they say Avoir and, and Avita saying, it's like, wait, are we not in England? Because maybe I thought this was the British government. Maybe this isn't. Maybe this is the Germans. Someone's got to be in there, though, to help him. Well, we'll 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 find out. So far, <laughs> so far, it hasn't happened. I mean, the last shot is, uh, you know, we got seventeen episodes. <laughs> got seven. He's got to make. Someone's got to turn on his side. Well, yeah. Well, you know, whose side is that? His own. Right. So, yeah. true. And, and the so. iconic uh, the prison bars come up mm -hmm. his face where he is the prisoner. Just in case you didn't get that from the whole episode, they really wanted to hit home with that. Like, yeah. 
Yeah. No, but I, I, I you know, as cheesy as it may be, mm-hmm. I, I certainly enjoy it because it's just this nice symbolic yeah. thing, and and it, it is so hard hitting and 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 comedic, mm-hmm. but good. Yeah. So. Right. Um. All right. So, uh, so we've gotten kind of, you know, beat by beat overall through the episodes. So now we can kind of take it more, uh, uh you know, a higher up perspective. Mm-hmm. We can talk about the questions and the themes, and um, you know, so a couple of questions that this thing raises and and if you guys want to answer any of them feel free to jump in or i can just list them off where's the village right what is the village whose side is number whose side is the village on uh what methods is the village willing to employ who can number six trust we were just talking about that how can number six escape who is number one will number six escape when how why did number six resign any of these jump at you that you just want to start maybe tackling based off of this episode? Uh, I, I, it's okay. So the whole what side is the village on? I keep going back to is this Britain's home for spies? Is this how they're going to declassify and decommission and keep them in a place where no other country like uh, a safe house, like a safe house in a way, and wow. just put them there mm-hmm. so they don't have to worry about other. Um, other countries getting a hold of them, or is this just such an elaborate plot by the communists that they have already infiltrated parts of the, gov- the British government that they've recreated a British town to try mm. to like extract information? Mm. And maybe, maybe number six <gasps> is the only one, and everyone else is players on this stage. Mm. I mean, from the first episode, these are things that yeah. I would question. So could so you you're thinking maybe could this be a place where they're like. Could they re- the could intention this be, the be trying? Yeah. Could the, yeah. And could the intention be to keep number six safe of something? Yeah. Who knows? Perhaps. I mean, to me, the most one of the, to me the intriguing part is, um, you know, uh, I like the idea of trying to figure out who number one is, mm-hmm. and because it's called the prisoner, you have to question. Okay, he didn't escape in this episode. Is he? And when is he? And how is he going to escape? Right? No. I don't think... You know, and this might be so far-fetched and wrong, but you think about shows with titles like The Prisoner, and it's like, at the end of the day, is it going to be flipped that he's his own prisoner because of stuff that's happened to him? Is it going to be flipped that he's... I don't know. Like, I feel like there's... The Prisoner and him being in prison in this village is just too... There's going to be way more layers to that. Absolutely, you know, mm-hmm. and, and in terms of the production design, what was really cool, everyone's always wearing stripes, right? Mm-hmm. Right. I.e., they're like yeah. prisoners. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, also, the, one of the things about the costume design, um, you know, you see it in the umbrella and you see it in the women's cloaks. Almost like if they started twirling those stripes, they would turn into a very hypnotic type device. And so that kind of furthers the idea of hypnosis. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I like that. Um, so I guess um, while we're kind of talking about that, um, you know, we, we've hinted at it a little bit, but um, the idea of Big Brother always watching you. And, you know, there was, um, we'll talk about the actual setting, but, um, you know, the statues that they had, they, you know, they used it to their advantage of like putting eyeballs in there, i.e. the cameras and, you know, the, the control room and you know, we we joked about it, but the idea of be seeing yeah. you, you know. Oh, well, they, even they said that when they were uh, uh, fusing, yeah. you know, they that's their little, like they know we're watching. Yeah, they're always watching. Always. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> No, it is, no, but, 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 you know, I, I think, Steph, what, what's drawing you to this show is that how it relates, you know, years after the show has been made, it still relates. I mean, more so, right? I think there's a, I think New York had an article about this. London probably had an article about this, but 10,000 hidden cameras found. Okay. Those are just the ones that were found. Right. Yeah. How many are there really? Well, I mean, we already know that uh, CCTV, the the British network, like is established and linked across, you know, main cities in London and so forth that you that watches see, its yeah. citizens. And I mean, you know, the red light cameras and stuff. See, we I don't hate more. that stuff. That doesn't make me. Well, I think yeah, because it's like I'm not doing anything wrong, so yeah, I'm yes. not concerned. I, right, and if God yeah. forbid something happens to me, and they could see it mm-hmm. on camera, awesome. 
Yeah, but to that same point, um, you know, if I'm walking down the street and picking my butt, I don't want that. You know what I mean? Like, there's cares? like Everybody elements of grossness that you don't want. I mean, they're, but they're not gonna like be like, oh, there's Phil picking his wedge. Let's put that up <laughs> but, on TMZ. Like, who cares? And, and no, but but, does. but okay, okay, take it. Let, let, I'm gonna argue against you because now, right? There's so many. What, what's like the latest thing? Memes, right? Mm -hmm. So someone will but, take a picture from the internet that they have no affiliation towards and make a joke out of it yeah, just by putting text over it okay but, but, who but, cares? but going to modern time up here and now you're we put so much of our lives out there for everyone to see because of social media like who cares On what purpose. big brother is watching yeah. like i say more dumb stuff when i'm drunk and tweeting than what like government will ever find out about th me. That's what I'm. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of an oxymoron almost about how we don't want to be surveillance, yet mm -hmm. we want to like tell the world like, went to the bathroom today. <laughs> I'm feeling sad. I'm fe like, come on. I know, I, I, it's technology I, I, being used for the good, and I, I can't. I can't. Hear Everyone it. needs to know what I had for lunch. Okay. <laughs> You know what? I, I, Philip K. Dick used to write a letter. Um, the story goes, a letter a day to the government, and eventually he was like. I want everything you have on me. And they just sent him a box of all of his letters. <laughs> so again, but it's it's one of those things, you know, I think, I think ultimately you just have to define what things are for you. And as long as you have a purpose and a meaning behind it, like for it, I want to ask you well, guys. That's the big thing with mm -hmm. all this purpose and meaning behind it with, with media, whether it be them, you know, surveillancing us or us putting ourselves out there a lot of people are lacking that purpose or meaning and they need that validation by other people so that's why they play technology mm -hmm. the way that they do now which i think is very different from the way they're using technology back then yeah they weren't validating they were trying to spy on people well, which is different and technology now helps us define our individuality where technology back then was uncertain and threatening in a lot of ways because people didn't know what it was they didn't know what was coming yeah, and um, we have a photo, you know, speaking of technology, right? So here's a here's a techie timeline. <laughs> oh it's my the god! Most Did you draw amazing. this yourself? Uh, I had uh, I had one of my uh, friends, you know, draw it. No, I, I didn't. I didn't. Um, I'll give credit for Where's it. Where's Nintendo? <laughs> so this is the strictly the progression of kind of uh, you know it begins with the calculator, right? And it progresses into uh, single computing and blah blah. And, and but the idea of uh, what, these things start for the purpose of one person and then now grow to be, again, with the internet, global, right? And it just kind of expands that way to the point that now we're tweeting, again, this is what I had for lunch. <laughs> um, and, and so what, what starts off as good intention, and I want to kind of tie this back into um, the be seeing you, if nothing else, mm -hmm. because I read that it, it, the, the, the symbol of be seeing you was originally started by Christians and I have no further research or whatever wow. beyond that so yeah. I wanted to ask you guys about that because in the, in this way right Christianity um, whatever you think of it I think ultimately was created uh, for the sense of good now people have you know people still can be good or mm -hmm. others you have used it to a uh, an idea of bad, you know, for their own intentions, and we can debate that forever. But we could totally debate that for real quick. I just want to say something else about the techie timeline. I promise it'll be really quick. Um, I think that because we've all, it seems we've all lived in the age where we've seen the progression of technology, gives us a certain perspective. Like if 20 years from now people were watching this show, I don't think they would think maybe talking over loudspeakers or being surveillance would matter as much because they're so used to it. Like we've seen mm -hmm. it go from it not being that way to it being this tech way. Okay, but how do you, okay, then, then how would you guys rate or view so let's say the industrial revolution with that's like newspapers are being printed and you're like that's not like do you say that's not cool or you're like oh wow i'm intrigued by this because i'm learning this is how it used to be i just don't think kids nowadays would care like i don't think they would care to know about a newspaper you think so no i i'm i'm, I'm laughing because i sadly agree with you yeah that's I, what i'm saying I, like i think it's super sad but yeah. like these kids don't know they don't care they, they're so used to this instant gratification. There's a yeah, the sense of entitlement. <laughs> right. So the fact that they're spying on someone to know what they're doing, I don't think will phase them as much as it might, you know, question yeah. or it, get conversation from us because we've seen this, this movement, whatever you want to call it, happen. In more ways, modern technology is doing more to uh, diminish and abolish our sense of individuality than what was happening to number six in the prisoner exactly okay sorry we'll go back to christianity we'll just start no, here now no, again. To, 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 <laughs> no if we, we, we're, we're already going that way i mean hey I don't, I don't know if you guys have their origin of the symbol of be seeing you so we can i don't you know. know i i 
was raised by a wild pack of atheists, so I have very little input on that. Yeah, I'm not the uh, church goer. If, uh, if, if you guys watching or listening, let us know, because, again, yeah. I could not find further information upon yeah. that, or at least maybe no, I just didn't try hard enough yeah, in this episode. I'm, well, it know. also is interesting that a lot of this is very, and I might get hate for this, but I'm just going to say it, a lot of this village is very religion like you know i feel like if you think about religion like every religion answers the same questions like where do we come from where do we go when we die where how do we feel better like just and i feel like that in a certain sense puts a false security on people so that they don't think outside the box and i feel like that's what's happening here as well and you know so okay so now let's go back mm -hmm. to technology right um <laughs> alexis bring up that wonderful photo right there of the the gap photo and uh, no we're not talking about the gap the clothing store <laughs> mind the gap um, but here, you know, okay, so we're looking at this, right? And so um, the, in terms of there's a necessity for Christianity, and we feel like there's a necessity for technology to better our lives, right? And even in, in every day, for me, I look at it like, okay, how can this be done better? And there must be a better way. But and, what does better mean to yeah. you? Better to most people, like better to me means it would create more thought from people. It will create all this stuff. Better to a lot of people now means quicker, faster, easier. And I and, don't know that that's necessarily better. And that's true. So, so the, the, the thing that we're looking at, right, the, the, the amount of features that something has continues to increase. The amount of features we actually use it for, you know, it, it's not decreasing, but you could say it's right. pretty much, mm -hmm. you know, I would argue Staying that in some sense you, you, you should draw a decreasing line there. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. and, right. it, and it is. It's the whole, I mean, it goes very back to a simple conversation of a quantity versus quality mm -hmm. i mean you can find all kinds of stuff online now but how is it good i mean even if you think yeah. about a tv show it's like back in the day and we're doing one right now so it's <laughs> like a little bit like it's, a, it's but, a bit meta right but in the same sense it's like back in the day it's like you had a tv show you had an idea you had to tell somebody that somebody then thought it was a good idea and you had to tell somebody else and that somebody thought it was a good idea and then you got to pitch that idea now it's just like all right let's just put a camera on ourselves and we got a tv show so hey, I, I pitched her there. the idea and I pitched you the idea. It's there's right, some work involved. Right, but a lot of people aren't. They're going on, you know what I mean? I'm just saying there's a there's a lot of other ways to get, you know, featured yeah. and stuff. That That's why I think it's the decline of good content. And where do you stand on this, Meredith? It's, it's hard. I think, I think the more technology progresses, we... As, as consumers can choose to consume what we want. You know, 20, 20 years ago, I was limited to watching the channels that cable or net, you know, network had. I was limited to the news that, that like a particular station uh, decided to give me. Now I can go out and read what I want. I can read news from uh, Al Jazeera. I can read news from BBC. I can read news from you know, South African uh, outlets. Um, but that being said, the ability to consume what we want is also dangerous. Uh, because then we can only choose to consume things that adhere that adhere to our own beliefs and practices. So yeah. we're no longer. I feel like we're we're all you know the way modern modern media is is it's almost doing ourselves a disservice because we're not thinking outside of the box. We're just taking whatever we want spoon fed to us that makes life pretty. Yeah, you're finding right. the, you're finding and information to support your own yeah. argument. Right. And I feel like the amount of thought that you just put into that, eighty percent of the population doesn't. They're just mm -hmm. like, oh, this thing mm -hmm. made me laugh. Cool, let's like it. Well, here's I don't a, know. Yeah, no, it's. Here's what know. I will say. You know, uh, it, you can. It could be good, but but it's almost like everything. It's mm -hmm. like it could be good, but it's like like you think about alcohol. You know, like it. it some people like a glass of wine with their <laughs> meal. It makes it taste better. And but then you have the like people 10. that right. But then you have the people that like ten. Yeah. But go out and drive and mm -hmm. go out and do these things that are disruptive. You know what I mean? Like the idea of technology is not bad. It's that it's the users that use it, not for I think what its intended purpose was. I'm just gonna make the correlation up. Not uh, I'm not up. I'm sorry. Um. Oh God. Um. Wally. Wally. Mm -hmm. That's that's where we're going. Like with with ever, everything spoon fed and making our lives so easy and thoughtless. Like not in terms of like I'm being rude, but I don't right. have to think about where I'm getting stuff from. We're gonna be those overweight people in those floating chairs sucking like sucking down our slurpees like that right and then the internet's gonna go down for a week and mm -hmm. people are gonna lose their freaking they go, okay, minds come on when facebook goes down for 30 minutes people a, a, lose CNN their minds is reporting on it okay they're not gonna know how to read a map they're not gonna know how to go anywhere they're not gonna know how to do any simple multi multiplication or mathematics like you don't they don't 
make people think anymore. And the problem solving and why people get so mad when they don't get their way is because I believe the problem solving element of education is not really there anymore because you don't need it. You just right. need Google. So let me Sorry, uh, I could go on and no, on. No, no, no. Not. Sorry, no, yeah, go, go I'm on. Gonna, I'm going to kind of give yeah. my final thoughts. And again, mm -hmm. this is the, we, we're not going to, yeah. I'm sure Sorry. we'll continue this argument. No, no, you guys are fine. <laughs> I will say this. <laughs> um, one of the things I think, you know, people think that, to me, there's, and the, the, you can say this is perhaps a grim view, but I, I would think that it's not. Um, no matter which way you slice and you dice it, right? You're always going to have a level of stress and conflict in your life, right? So mm -hmm. if, if you choose to live a simpler life, then perhaps you're going to have to worry about what food you put on your table every day. If you don't have to worry about that, like you know you're going to get lunch and dinner today and you don't have to think about those things, your conflict is going to be on others. Like, what do I do with my free time and all this other stuff, right? So I think if you establish that in your life, then, then, um, then it's about choosing what to worship and things like that. So going mm -hmm. back, no, no. There is in the everyday trenches of life, there is no such thing as atheism. You will, you have to worship one thing or another, whether it's money, whether it's, uh, you, you know, whether it's a loved love, one, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever these things may be as you define them. But I think the problem is you just have to be aware enough of what you choose and why you're choosing it instead of living your life on a default human setting. And that's my biggest problem. Um, actually do a do my own show about that and i actually the the purpose is to ask people why they think the way they do and nine times out of ten they have no idea they just picked something up along the way and went with it they don't mm -hmm. people don't think for themselves anymore and they don't have to and that's yeah. scary absolutely rover needs to go like bop some people on the head <laughs> Um, and again, unless anyone has any kind of closing thoughts, because again, this is something we'll, we'll continue to debate throughout. Well, I, I just, my only thing is just bringing it back to the, the source material at hand is how, um, you know, and, and I, I want to say there's a, you know, you have a note here that, you know, uh, there's never been a weapon we've made that hasn't been used. And the same can be said in, in The Prisoner that, you know, and I don't want to give too much away, but, you know, what, what level they'll go to employ to get information and to get people to fall in line. And I think, you know, um, the missionary tale of technology in mm -hmm. the prisoner. And I think that's something that we're going to see develop over future episodes. That's a good, I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought that up in that, by the way, the, um, uh, Patrick McGowan said that. Quote. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'll give it I credit. thought that was you. I thought that was Philip. No, no? unfortunately not. Oh. No, not a Phil Sweet. Yeah. You know what? I, Original? <laughs> not quite. Not quite. That, the there'll PSO? be years before I write my own. <laughs> yeah, the <about>. PSOs? <laughs> uh, so be, you know, let's talk about like individualism over. versus society, right? Oh, um, wow. Um, Albertus <laughs> was the font that was heavily used, and um, and they made a specific choice in terms of the production design that there would not be a lot of capitals, if at all. I can't quite remember. Mm -hmm. So that way, no one letter stood out. And I thought that was so interesting, just, just even down to the production design of, of individualism versus the society. So Yeah, no, uh, I mean, it, it just, again, goes to strip away any sense of self. You know, it's kind of weird. I'm, a, I'm really against capital letters in my life, so I wonder if somewhere... <laughs> Like nothing, I don't ever really write capitals. Like my website, everything is just all lowercase. Is I'm it laziness? No, it's, I don't like the way it looks, to be honest with you. It's like a design thing. Like I don't, I, like the prisoner like that, I think looks more aesthetically pleasing than, or visually pleasing, yeah. Okay. Yeah, looking up at the. Yeah, like it looks way better. Huh. The, the, in the, lower so case. we're we're comparing the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog step Z, which is the lazy dog. <laughs> doesn't want to air cap. I'm kidding. And then we're looking at a lowercase version of that. So yeah. I don't like that you call me a dog. You call me a lazy dog. Oh, I love up. dogs. All right, you do. Um, I love you too, Phil. All right. So one of the things that we didn't talk about was the idea of, of death and funerals and the importance oh, it has mm -hmm. in this show. Um, obviously, you know. Uh, when we're giving the tour of the village, you know, we have our own graveyard, but you are going to be more interested in our social club. And then we see the, the you know, the funeral. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very formulaic, but there's nothing behind it. Except number nine has, has a certain sense of affection to it, but, you know, and Cobb does. But other than that, you know, it's, 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 it's used more as a threat than like a ceremony of one's, one's life. Right. But if you don't have your own life, aren't you kind of dead anyway? Oh. Boom. Drop the mic. Step Z. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Meredith, I can't. I can't even follow up with that. I mean, that's that's. I mean, exactly. There's no. 
I mean, the only thing I, I will say in regards to the, the graveyard is that uh, I just want to know, did those people die of natural causes or? I don't think so. Yeah, how they got there. Poison. I mean, yeah. Snow White did it. <laughs> yeah. with, the, with the poison in the dining room with yeah. the candlestick. <laughs> um, all right. As we're... Um, we're kind of getting towards uh, the end of things, and uh, you know, we'll try to we'll try to readjust some things based off of how uh, this goes and how you guys kind of react to it and things like that. So, uh, so bear with us. The first episode, we want to find our footing we again. We get an extended. We give an extended yeah. again. We don't want you guys mm -hmm. feeling like we don't know our information, so we're making this one a little bit longer. So that way, you guys are like, oh, these guys know what they're talking about. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have to say that, Phil. <laughs> So you know what? No, I'm just kidding. You know what? I do have to say that. Guys, Aww. please think we know what we're talking about. I promise we at least watch the episode once. Yeah. Your uh, favorite quotes. Um, um, uh, we already said oh. the uh, we're all pawns. Yeah. Your move, my dear. Um, Jeez. There's the, there's the iconic one, six of one, mm -hmm. half a dozen of the other, which is obviously the, the society that's kind of helping support our cause. They're named after six of one yeah we we had kind of already uh used mine in a topic point but the be seeing you is yes. like i could well, see so early on sorry it's six no, of fine. one half dozen of the others six of one is the men and a half dozen of the other are the women like the seven to twelve could be i don't know this <laughs> men be. woman number yeah. thing i'm really like i like numbers i want to know it could I be figure it out <laughs> You know what? And a, and a still tongue makes a happy life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of like, shut the mm up. Yeah, if you don't question anything, you won't have any problems here. Yeah, I would not survive there. Because I question everything. I'd be like, um, excuse me, why is the ice cream coming now? Um, excuse me. I do, I ask those questions. Eh, maybe you might get some answers. Maybe, doubtful. Probably but not the correct answers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely not the correct answers. Just yeah. the answers to some shut answer. me up, yeah. Um, all right. Any any other quotes that jump out to you guys? I mean, obviously the show's very quotable. Yeah. You know. Um, and, well, did but, we did we go for the the big one? The which one? The I'm a. Oh, I'm a no. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Go I'm ahead. a. I'm I'm not. A, uh, now I'm messing it up because it's not for me. I am no. I'm, no, I am I'm not, not a number. number. I am a man. Yes. And he, we also get introduced. You know, I will not be uh, stamped, filed, briefed, Brief. debriefed, uh, ah. indexed. And I don't, I don't know the exact order. I know. Um, and I just spoke about how we were experts. We're, no, we're, we're f expert fans, but we're not machines who can quote everything. I'm really bad at that. Yeah. I have a limited memory bank. And unfortunately, and actually quotes are not one of my things. I always, my boyfriend jokes that he has pop culture Tourette's because he can quote things from out of nowhere. And I'm like, I, I, can't, I can't even quote what I just said. Fair enough. And so now um, I kind of, uh, you know, we, we gave a little bit of context to the show. And so, you know, in hindsight, maybe we should have done this at the top, but who knows? You, again, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Live and learn. Uh, so uh, this is, Steph, I'm here to tell you how the show came into being. You know what? Tell me. I'm all ears. <laughs> and, uh, Tell me how it is. And one of the things, Number by two. the way, as we talk about this, I don't want it to just be me spewing out fact and information, so do partake in the, in the conversation. I will ask questions if I have them. Um, so ITV um, was, was started in the 1950s. Um, it was an alternate to the then monopoly of BBC in Britain, and uh, the man who, who gets the credit is Lou Grade. Right? So here's a, we're looking at a picture of him. And um, I, for, I tried to find a picture with him and Patrick McGowan or somebody from the show, but I couldn't. So uh, he is the man on the right, for those of you, uh, if you're looking at this picture. Do you uh, know who he's with? I, I, you know, it, it said it. Oh, I'm just so curious. You know what? That's, uh, it could be anybody. Because I'm sorry, in, in my head, I actually want to believe that ITV was started by a person of color in the 50s. And it was not. It was not. I know. It yeah, unfortunately so was not. <laughs> Thanks, Britton. Um, very, very, you know, very racist just, uh, at the time still. Just a bit. Um, and then ITC was the production company started by him to make all of these shows for ITV. Um, so there we go. There's ITC Presents. And, you know, as, as episodes go on, we'll kind of see that as part of it. Oh, a little um, intertwined logo back and forth, run the straight and narrow in the middle. That's right. Now, this is where Meredith comes in because, uh -oh. um, so Danger Man, right? So Danger Man is Patrick McGowan's show, uh, started in the 1960s. It was, it actually beat James Bond to the screen, right? So it, yeah. in terms of, so this we're talking about kind of in the spy genre. Danger Man was a spy genre. Mm -hmm. And again, came out, before, you know, and, and Patrick McGowan was, there was debate. He, he, they wanted him as, as a James Bond character, but yeah. it, was, it was not to be. He didn't want to do it. 
He is an attractive man, though. I just have to throw that out there. He's got that spy look. I when like watching that, I was like, oh man, I forgot. I forgot how I forgot it. I bet you if you look. sorry, I bet you if you would take a picture of him and show it to a hundred women, at least eighty of them would say that. Like, who is this? They'd say James Bond. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. he just has that. He, he has, has that, that look. look. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, Meredith, uh, speak to speak to us about Danger Man. You know, you well, you've seen yeah, I've every seen, yeah, episode, I, I, no, most of the episodes. I've seen, I've seen enough that you know. So Danger Man started. You know, it was, it's a spy show, and and uh, McGowan plays um, uh, Agent Agent Drake, and he's actually um, he's a NATO spy. He's not with like MI six or anything. He's actually a spy for NATO, and he uh, kind of goes through. And and his whole thing is that he does not believe, and, and the actor McGowan does not believe in violence. Or sex on TV. He he. I mean, there's a great quote that you brought up um, that was, you know, television is a guest in people's homes, and he wanted that to so, show through in his show. And so everything that he solves is through technology and wits, which uh, really, to me, is the pinnacle of a good spy novel. You don't need to be a brute force to get your way. You don't have to go assassinate people. You just have to solve your your mystery through uh, your mind. And uh, Danger Man was great at that. It was you know kind of opened up the world for what we saw with, um, you know, Get Smart and other, you know, subsequent shows from that, out of that time period. And uh, the thing with um, McGowan is, uh, can, I, can I go ahead and jump to, like, yeah. how, how, uh, yeah, go ahead. how yeah. Prisoner started, is he got bored. He kind of got tired of doing the show after so many years. He's like, hey, guys, I'm, I'm over this. I want to be done with this. So he pitched the idea of the prisoner, and... Um, Lou Grade said it's just so crazy it might work. <laughs> and uh, they actually gave um, Patrick McGowan uh, carte blanche, uh, creative control, yeah. to work on the show. And, and he, you know, um, worked on it, and this is what we got. I'm trying to remember. He had a the writer from the... Um, yeah, so... Um, uh, Why am if I, 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 yeah, no, no, no please, no, please. So one of the, you know, so mm-hmm. speaking of carte blanche, what was interesting to me was that there was no official deal in place, mm-hmm. right? And and I always love it when, you know, there's that old school business of, like, we just shook hands. I was we have a deal that. in place. Like, wh- yeah. what do you mean paperwork? We mm-hmm. just talked about it. We shook hands. That should be enough. And, um, you know, even, even whatever you think of Donald Trump, he actually still adheres to that mentality to a degree. Um, and what was even more interesting is that, you know, here there was presentations, there was boards, there were scripts mm-hmm. and, and treatments and all this. And he was like, throw it out. Just tell Pat, what do you want? What, do you, what is the show? Just tell me the show, and that's it. I, I want to know the show, not, not this. And that's how it came to be. Oh, yeah. And by the way, so, you know, one of the things that you'll find interesting stuff, uh, obviously still to this day, and as, as, as we continue, we'll talk about the behind the scenes of, of, of certain feuds and things like that, but still to this day, there's debate whether uh, John Drake, the character in Danger Man, which... Which was called uh, "Secret Agent" in uh, in, 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 in the U.S. and inspired <laughs> the the song "Secret Agent Man." Wow! See, a little that bit of history. A for little you. bit of history. Mm-hmm. I like it. You know what? Too to speak to the the carte blanche of like scenario. Again, it's amazing to me that when you have one person with a brilliant idea and you let him run with it, something like this. Again, a show that we're talking about so much later can happen. I mean, if you think about television now, there's so many moving parts and there's so many cooks in the kitchen. You know what I mean? Like, I, I love that. I didn't know that till you know, you guys just said it. But, but at the that. same time, it's, he was the highest paid actor at the time in Britain. Um, again, he was up for the role of, 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 of Bond. So there was, mm-hmm. so, you know what I mean? He had a certain track record. But I'm just saying, like, yeah. it goes to show that the human nature back in the day, which I feel like we've lost a little bit of, is that handshake, is that trust, is that yeah. if I say mm-hmm. I'm going to deliver something amazing, I'm going to. I'm not going to try and cheap out or, you know, figure out, you know, the quickest, easiest, cheapest way to make money. He actually gave a crap and wanted to make a good series. Well, yeah. and because it was essentially ending the most popular program on air at the right. time by him saying, you know, I'm I'm done, I want out. And they could have been like, no, we have to, you have to go through with this contract and go X amount of you know, yeah. years on this. And we're like, all right, no, we'll give you your out. And, and in hindsight, it's interesting to think about, uh, since Patrick McGowan also stars in The Prisoner, is The Prisoner Agent Drake, is this show actually, in a weird way, like, um, subverting, like, not subverting itself, like, re- self-referential yeah. to him and uh, leaving that role. Yeah, because, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, firstly, because, again, he resigned from 
mm-hmm. Danger Man. He resigns um, here, and again, is he resigning as John Drake? It's you know, yeah. Wolf, you know, uh, it's very. So wait, it's, I have a question that yeah. might be so not right, but the, is him resigning from Danger Man have anything to do with how they started this series with him resigning? That's is what we're just saying. We we actually debate. don't. Yeah, that's oh, the debate. Oh, that's that's actually debate. one of the the longest held debates because it's it's never. I don't want to don't want to spoil anything, um, but it's it's never. We'll find out. But it's yeah. there's it's not like a lot he he resigned it. from this thing that worked mm-hmm. to do this other thing where maybe he felt like he was a prisoner because he had to deliver this new thing that's better than the old one. Interesting. Yeah. That's a that's a nice little parallel. Um, you know, so going in here, um, in the in, in the links provided for you guys in terms of the scripts, you won't find this, but um, th- here's a kind of a story information, right? Um, uh, so I'll try to read some of the more interesting ones. Uh, he, it's it's always us or them. Um, and this is in the treatment, by the way. He awakens in the village. Um, who is the prisoners? Who are the captors? Um, who then runs the village? Is it east or west? Um, in any event, he is a prisoner. Action is always happening on three levels. Our hero is const- constantly probes to discover why he is a prisoner and who his captors are. He strives by all means and at risk of death to escape. He becomes involved with his captors and takes an active part in situations arising in their lives, which that's an interesting one. Mm-hmm. And then um, he gives a full kind of description of all the various things of the village. So geography, communications, the name, transport, shopping, currency, inmates, industry, hospital, surveillance, amusements, death, uh, the key buildings, right? So we know there's the uh, labor exchange, the citizens advice bureau, town hall, palace of fun, I want to go the hospital and the open air cafe. It has its own newspaper, of course, and uh, TV and radio. Wow! So that was all part of a forty-page uh, treatment. Wow! That that McGowan was thrown out. They had to throw out during the pitch. He was like, I. He was he was as well researched as you were about this, and then having to throw out because we ramble. Not Steph ramble. Seas. I'm sorry. I'm really excited about everything we're talking about. What did you find? I just read that each episode had a budget of 75,000 pounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is roughly about $68,000. In the 60s. And to give wow. you context, right, again, so you're looking at it like, you know, in today's day and age, that's not a lot. That was $35,000 above the average of an no, ITC. No, I thought it was yeah. a lot. And it is. Yeah. They, yeah. they put a lot. I mean, I'm sure, like... You know, location itself wasn't wasn't cheap to secure, but you know, and then how much how much of that budget is for McGowan himself? He only took five thousand really? episode. Really? Only oh five thousand episode. Yeah. yeah. And then local actors got paid what two two pounds a day? Two pounds a day. So that's like four bucks a day. Yeah. Roughly. Wow. Yeah. Um, so so definitely, um, and you know, while we're kind of on that, um, they literally went seven days a week for sixteen hour days, and it was uh, two rounds of four week shoots. So they completed yep. the entire seventeen episodes in in, in eight four. weeks. Yeah, wow. And that, that was for the exterior shots, and okay. and an average day, right? Um, for those of you who know filmmaking, it, it it's called setups, right? Every time you mm-hmm. you know change, the, change something, yeah. it's a setup. So average back then and still kind of to this day, was about 15. They did 33 in a day. Hustling. You know, they had to. Oh, man. Yeah. That's had, insane. Um, so, and in, in we, we made note of other people joined in, right? Mm-hmm. So um, there's David Tomlin, who um, in 1960 for, formed Everyman Films with Patrick McGowan in the intent that they were going to make films, right? Um, but that never happened, and so their first production was actually The Prisoner. So it took six years down the line for this company to actually get a production deal. Um, but the more interesting people were um, Don, uh, I'm never going to be able to say these names, Don Chafee and George Mark, Mark Stein. Mm-hmm. And uh, Don had, by this point, he had uh, directed about 20 movies or so. Uh, George Mark Stein, the, he, as we go on, his story will become more and more interesting because... Um, this doesn't spoil the show, but they had creative differences. Yeah. Now, what was Mark Stein's role again? And was he? Uh, he was the s- story editor, right? Okay. And so, when you look at a title like that today, it, it doesn't mean a lot. But mm-hmm. back then, like there was so much weight held on a story editor, you know. And and Don and and Mark and George get the credit of writing Arrival. Now, it's said heavily that that Pat McGowan rewrote a lot of it. 
but they are the ones credited with with, with writing it. And um, at the time, George Markstein, he was a journalist uh, before this uh, for Stars and Stripes, um, the U.S. Um, Army magazine. And uh, he makes a uh, – there, there's a photo that Alexis has right there that um, – that in in the opening sequence, right, the man that is being yelled at, that is George. Um, so, mm -hmm. so he makes his little cameo, and I, it's ironic now, post fact of, of the full history because. Yeah. yeah. Spoiler. Oh, I see the village. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, world. indeed. Um, so there, 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 you kind of have it. any um, insight, you know, any any uh, sort of thoughts on this. Even though it's you know more fact than anything else. Well, I think I think it'll it'll come into play, like you said later on, when we start um, uncovering the creative differences behind the scenes, because it it is definitely something that comes into play later. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, uh, Don and George worked on Danger Man. Um, mm -hmm. Don more so than uh, he was a director. George became a story editor towards the end of it, and. Uh, Going back to Danger Man, episode... We need to screen Danger Man. We, we, sh we will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to see it now. Yeah. Like um, yesterday. Well, specifically this episode, right? So in season one, episode three, um, it's called Call Me Three. Have you seen this episode? I have. Okay. Yeah. So I have a description for it, but I'd rather hear your description of this episode oh, because okay. people cite this as... Um, well, the, it's going to be hard because I'm just going to go off script because it's been... I saw, you know, I saw it yeah, when I was a kid. But, but I mean, but... but so we kind of have the idea of where the prisoner comes from in this episode. It's so early on. And, um, you know, Drake uh, is actually um, taking the place of a, of a defector and um, going over to, was it East Germany? I don't know. I, I don't I, remember. No. I don't even remember if they if it was East Germany or if it was Russia at the time. Um, well, basically, so he's he's going in as a spy to go to this facility where there is um, an area that they train agents to become English, which I love uh, in watching Agent Carter. They have the whole Red Room thing. Yes. That's what it reminded me of. Um, so basically what happens is he finds this replica of an English village, and all these foreign agents are being trained in the ways of, like, proper here's our tea time, here's when we do this, this is our accents, and and his whole uh, goal there is to disrupt the flow of this and stop these mm -hmm. agents from entering England, which if that hadn't been disrupted or there were other facilities around the time, what if what if this is all bringing him back yeah. into that village? But that that episode right there is kind of what where the whole idea of the prisoner came it's from. It's kind of funny, though, that you actually mentioned Agent Carter in this because if you think about mm -hmm. Agent Carter and, like, the Marvels, the cinematic universe, and, like, all these things, it's like one, you know, Agent That's Carter... Right. They, they all kind of coincide their storyline or they share storylines yeah. or they, they add pieces so that you do that. So I wonder, like, it seems to me hearing, you know, about Danger Man being new to the prisoner, um, that some, th there's a lot of things that can reference back and forth to each other. So if you're a fan of one, you'd be that fan that, you know, like yeah. the show stands on its own, like Agent Carter stands on its own if you haven't watched, you know, any of the other shows. But if you have, then you're like, oh, that was in this, that person did that, that's why this. And, and you'll see other reoccurring characters from Danger Man. Um, popping up in the prison or not reoccurring, but like yeah. you know references, and then for for a television show at that time, this is actually really unique to have yeah. a spinoff, if you yeah. will, because right. in in my in my head in my head canon, Prisoner is a spinoff of Danger Man, and and that is how I perceive the the shows is that no Drake, and and that is how I choose to view the oh, wow. history of everything. So yeah. gotta watch it. I you know I, I I choose to view it that way too. You know, because the good news is it doesn't add, it doesn't take away, no. but it adds. Yeah, right. And the same with you, what you're saying with the Marvel um, yeah. MCU and everything. Um, Sweet. So let's let's talk about this location again. It's never, it isn't revealed until the very end, but it it very much be, became. Don't tell me. You don't want to know. Oh, oh, just like the filming, like the, the filming, filming location. location. Oh, okay, okay, the okay. filming yeah. location. Yeah, I don't want any yeah. spoilers. <laughs> um, and I, I don't know how to fully pronounce this, but Port Mirian in North Wales was the location used as a village. It, it was inspired because, you know, they were there for Danger Man uh, a couple of years, I, I believe in 62 uh, is when they officially were there. Wow. Um, and so, you know, a couple of years later, it was like, okay, this would be the place to shoot. And um, um, William Ellis, 
William Zellis, um, he built this, and he started in 1925 building this, and it wasn't until 1973 that it actually got completed. And so going back to Meredith's point about the two different shoots, mm -hmm. if you really pay attention, the village changes. Yeah. Just uh, because they're continuing to build. So is this village, do you know, like, how does it stand today? Is it now a resort getaway? Yeah. Yeah, we can go oh, visit. Okay. We can go visit the village. So much so yeah, that... Mm -hmm. So this, literally, we're yeah. doing our last episode from there. Sweet love. Um... April April seventeenth, there's the meetup by the Six of One Society, and um, the special guest is Darren Nesbitt, who plays the new number two in It's Your Funeral. Oh, so you know, not only can you visit it, there's stuff happening there. It's like a Wait, village we're going. con. Yeah, every year, every year, there's yes! someone there. Oh my God, we should go to the village con. It's totally a village con. We should just start that event. I know. And then we can wind up getting a lot of people to pay to go, and it will pay for us to go. That's exactly that's how it works. How about, let's just let's, let's take donations. Let's see if, if yeah. the fans are if out there. If you guys think we should go to the village con, the biggest donator gets to come with us. If you pay for all of us to go, you get to come. <laughs> yeah, if you, yeah, exactly. We'll just ride on your coattails. Yeah. I just think it would be amazing to do, and I, I, I just, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, but yes, the village still stands today in its creepy, uh, beautiful, brightly colored fashion with its green dome. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a, uh, and I'm not very familiar with England. I'm sorry, godparents. Um, uh, where in it's kind of like in a little like crevice in North yeah. Wales. Like, a, we have a, do we have a map? Actually, I don't we don't remember. have a oh, we don't okay. have a full map. We okay. just have kind of pictures of. We, of, of, we can't of, give away where the village is. Yeah, we, we you can't. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, you, you, you're, you're absolutely right. And then and the buildings themselves, they housed. You know, I mean, the, no production in um, Britain at this time went two miles outside of the company, right? Mm -hmm. And so these guys are going, uh, I think, like three hundred miles away. And they're shooting here, and so they're using the local actors, right? They're getting paid two a day. And the town hall is used as a production office. The actors are staying everywhere. And the local cinema is used for uh, the dailies, That's which amazing. I found. That's kind of awesome. I found interesting. Um, Man, I thought extra work paid paid poorly now. <laughs> <laughs> that was very much like, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you're there in North Wales, it's one of those things that you're just so happy to be. It's what is vacation, this? I'll be I here. Know. Right. Um, That's gorgeous. And the original butler um, was said to have no dialogue and was very athletically built. And uh, this, we'll talk about how the butler tapes, takes on shape and meaning, but obviously he was not that. And, it's, right? it's interesting how in the, the 60s they used a lot of um, little people to fill interesting roles. I mean, we see this with Indiana Jones. We see this in James. Do we see in a, in a James Bond episode? No, I don't think so. Oh, no, I'm thinking um, to plane, boss, to plane. What movie is that? Got my brain stopped. Mm. Fantasy, Island. Fantasy, Fantasy Island. Island. Thank you. Uh, is it's an interesting. I'm I'm really big into tropes, and mm -hmm. uh, and and it's interesting that they chose to go that route, um, for this butler, which, uh, you know, it's just it's it's they're playing on things that were popular at the time. Yeah. I find. Sorry, I speak. I on no, my no. off time, I speak way too much about diversity in film and movies, and I love looking at how things were then versus now. So yeah, I don't no, do anything to it. offend people. Sorry. I just yeah, that's just my thing. That's All right. Is, sister. So um, you know, we have a whole section of, of trivia that I, I think we're gonna we'll forego for now. <laughs> but in terms of the reception, you know, I always found it interesting um, that the MGM held a press conference, and and here's Pat McGowan, and unfortunately, Steph, you won't quite get this, but he came out in cowboy outfits um, behind bars and did this Does press conference. Does he escape conference. on a horse? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, yeah, we, know, we don't know. Yeah. But, but imagine you, this is built mm -hmm. to you as a spy genre, right? So I'd build this to you very differently. Like this is very highbrow entertainment. You know, you have to really think, and that's what drew you to it. But um, here it's like, okay, here's a spy thing, and very much um, here's this cowboy behind bars. What is this? Right. You know, and this is before, you know, it's not like today where you have trailers online and things like that. Like, you just you just get this one bit of information and everyone's going to run with it. And so it's like, what is this? Um, so, misinformation. Misinformation. Misdirection. All right. Oh, there's so much good trivia. We'll have to just get yeah, later we'll, on. Yeah, we'll, we'll, kind of, uh, we'll kind of figure mm -hmm. out where it all fits. But, you know, we kind of mentioned some of it throughout um magoon dubbed the uh, gibbering man in the hospital i will say that because that ties specifically to this episode uh magoon and number six both had the same birthday 
you know, so that was that was in tonight. Then the episode is that birthday, March nineteenth. Um, is that play into any history that I'm not that's not connecting in my head? Any mm. not to my no. knowledge. Specific happened on that day. Okay. Wait, when you say McGowan dubbed the oh he vo- he did voiceover. For yeah. The so show. When, okay. when he's like blah, yeah, blah, blah, that guy that was McGowan. Right. So um, so I found that to be cool. Oh, an interesting note that credit cards were introdu- introduced in Britain in 1966. Yes. And they start talking about credit. Yeah. Oh, that's so that's fascinating. So um, wow. lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Um, all right, so as we, um, as we continue on, we'll bring in more trivia. We'll try to condense a little bit, um, you know, for the purposes Maybe. of various things. But the problem is we have to hit so much, so it, mm-hmm. it, it's tough. Yeah. We'll bring in comments. Um, so definitely, you know, participate along because, you know, I do want to read them and, and open this up as much as we yeah. can. I one one oh. trivia... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go, go on. One trivia thing that I want to know that I don't believe we knew the answer to, so I don't know if any of you fans out there know the answer, but I want to know if the the number the, plate, mm-hmm. as they call it On there, the Lotus 7, on so the if Lotus we bring 7, up the yeah. picture. Um, K-A-R-1-2-0-C, if, that, if there's any meaning behind that. I would think that there would be, but I don't know. I don't know. No. Maybe maybe someone out there does. I have a really important question in terms of yes. viewing order. Are we going to go with air date or are we going to go with the recommended uh, viewing order of the episodes because there is dispute on There's the so way much they dispute. should be watched? Here's the good news. If, if, if you're not – if you choose not to watch us live, <laughs> then the good news is you can pick your order. The bad news is um, next week, I forget how, why I chose Chimes of Big Ben and where I got that from, but that's, <laughs> you know, unless something drastic mm-hmm. happens and you guys, like, threaten to kill me, that's the next episode that we will okay. be doing. I'm just going to trust you guys yeah. on this, and I'm just going to go with what you tell me. What is the, Okay, so what is the, do you know the recommended I order? I don't off the top of my head now, and I should have, um, because there, there's, I want to say... I, I want to see Chimes of Big Ben comes in a little bit later. It does. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the original. Again, I have this book, right? Yeah. It's The Prisoner, Volume 1, and there's Volume 2, mm-hmm. which I also have, of the original scripts. And on here is Arrival, Chimes of Big Ben, wow. A, B, and C, then Free For All, uh, Schizoid Man, then The General, then Many Happy Returns, and then Dance of the Dance of the Dead is in Volume 1. So that's the order that... I was going okay. in just because that's right. how the book is. Yeah, I think that's I think that's actual. Um, I believe that's air date mm-hmm. order because um, I want to say Chimes of Big Ben is is like third or fourth yeah. uh, in the the fans view, and then I, I think as long as Once Upon a Time is second to last. Um, I, yeah, I believe good. Chimes of Big Ben is second yeah. in however they have it online because okay. that's how I went to watch it last night. Cool, and, I, and when. That was what it said to play next. There you go. Perfect. So we're going to go with that. Um, So, and, but regardless, we'll do every single one of these episodes. So much to get through, so much to talk about. Um, And we, you know, based off of your feedback, we will, you know, and and kind of our own internal feedback, we'll try to adjust in the best way that we can and, and, and strive for perfection you know, every single week. So don't forget to uh, subscribe. You know, you can listen to us on iTunes by searching The Prisoner After Buzz TV. You can listen to us on SoundCloud.com slash After Buzz TV. Or you can watch us on YouTube.com slash After Buzz TV. And as an added bonus, if you guys want to participate live with us, you know, the, um, the, you, you just watch us there. So yeah. Yeah. And hashtag tweet us. Mm-hmm. That's right. Speaking of interacting with us, Stephsy has a Twitter. What is your Twitter? You guys can find me on Twitter at I-A-M-S-T-E-F-Z. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Do you promise not to abuse that privilege of the fans and you won't put out like, hey, today I ate a something? No, I don't. I don't. You don't need to know what I'm eating. Unless you ask me, I will <laughs> tell you. I will respond. But I tweet about the prisoner, Agent Sports. Carter. Sports, I do like sports, sorry. And just other fun stuff. I like to have a quote of the day, too. I'm getting back into it. I dropped it for a while. Very good. And Meredith? Well, if you like cat pictures, you can follow me at M-P-L-A-C-K on Twitter and Instagram. I have a lot of cats. Very cool. And, um, again, we want to thank Six of One Society for supporting us. Uh, April 17th of 2015 is the meetup if you're listening to this in future years just go on their website their facebook page and every year they do a meetup with another special guest so um lots lots to to do um and just tell a friend spread the word please we we, this this is the first episode and we want to make this as big an event as we can so be seeing you be seeing you
from executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.